Good evening. Tonight we're going to learn how to balance redox reactions using two different methods. By the time you are done with this PowerPoint, you should be able to use either the tie line, also called the oxidation number change method, or a half reaction method to balance regular equations. You should be able to balance reactions in acidic or basic solutions using the half reaction method, and you should be able to recognize and balance a special type of redox reaction, which is called a disproportionation reaction. The very first thing you need to do in your problem is to identify whether or not your reaction is a redox process. You can do this by looking for changes in the oxidation state. If you see a change occurring, please identify the substance that is being reduced and the substance that is being oxidized. Remember, when we talk about these processes, the substance that is undergoing oxidation is what we call the reducing agent or the reductant and the substance that is undergoing reduction is what we call the oxidizing agent or the oxidant because it's forcing something else to undergo that process. Please remember from class we discussed the different reaction types and that's your very first signal on whether or not you have a redox reaction. Combustion and single replacement reactions will always be a redox process and that is due to the fact that we're forming a compound from an element or taking a compound and creating a new element as a product as you can see in the example below where we have H2 in its elemental form going into a compound water where it has a change in its oxidation state. Please also remember that your double replacement reactions will never be a redox process because they're just switching ions and then your synthesis or decomposition reactions will also have a maybe attached to them if it is a case where you have an element reacting with another element forming a compound then those processes will be redox if you have two elements that are or two compounds excuse me that are reacting to form a larger compound then it will be a non-redox reaction. Okay, so we're now going to begin to look at a few different examples here. And the first type of method that we're going to use is that oxidation number change method or the tie line method. Now you will see here two different reactions, one in which we are reacting zinc and hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So please notice that you have a single replacement reaction, which is one of the always redox process reactions and so now if we look at our tie line here the zinc is going to be our substance that is going to undergo oxidation the elemental zinc will have a charge of zero the zinc and the zinc chloride will have a plus two charge so on a per atom basis and this is the thing i would recommend doing most is treated on a per atom basis for our oxidation we're going to have a loss of two electrons per atom. So that means that we're going to have a total of plus two because we have only one atom of zinc on our reactant side. Now, the other substance that is going to be undergoing reduction will be the hydrogen. In this case, chloride ions are both one minus, and so as a result, they will be spectator ions. The hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid will have a plus one charge and it will have a zero charge for the hydrogen gas. So on a per atom basis for our reduction, the hydrogens will be gaining one electron per atom. So now that gives me a total of minus one for the charge on hydrogen. The whole key thing whenever we're talking about a redox process is the number of electrons that are lost must equal the number of electrons gained. So in this case, because of the fact that we have a minus one versus a plus two, I know that I'm going to need a minimum of two hydrogen atoms to make this reaction become balanced. Now that I have the minus two and the plus two equaling each other, this will be my total number of atoms of hydrogen that I need on each side of the equation. Thus, I have the two for the coefficient in front of the HCl, and then I have the two atoms from the subscript 
for the hydrogen gas. Now, if we look at a second example, down here we have the addition of carbon monoxide to iron 3 oxide, and it is producing iron and carbon dioxide gas. So as we start off this process, the very first thing that we need to do is identify our substances that are undergoing oxidation and reduction. So if we look at this in the iron 3 oxide, the iron has a plus 3 oxidation number, oxygen is minus 2. Carbon is plus 2, and the oxygen is minus 2 for carbon monoxide. It is 0 for the iron in its elemental form, and then it is plus 4 for the carbon, and minus 2 again for the oxygen in the carbon dioxide. So hopefully you can see that the iron is going to be our substance that is being reduced. So for the iron, on a per atom basis, we're going to add three electrons per atom. Now, since my base unit on the reactant side has two atoms of iron, I'm going to automatically start by placing a two for its coefficient because I know I'm going to have to have at least two atoms that are going to undergo reduction. So that gives me a grand total of minus six for the reduction process. When I look at the carbon for the reactant, I have one atom of carbon on each side. So on a per atom basis, I'm going to be losing two electrons. Now, that will give me a total positive charge of plus two. Since I have plus two versus minus six, I'm going to multiply this bottom oxidation reaction by three. That will give me a total of plus six. So now the plus six and the minus six balance. So that tells me I need to have three atoms of carbon on each side of the equation. So I'd have three atoms of, or three molecules of carbon monoxide and three molecules of carbon dioxide. The very last thing that we need to do to make this reaction balance is for the irons. I have two atoms of iron on the reactant side for the iron two oxide, and I only have one for the product. So I'm going to place a two for its coefficient for the iron. Okay, so now it's your turn. So I'm going to take a moment and I would say pause the video here for just a second and try to balance these out using the tie line method on your own. And then I will start this in just a second with the explanation. Okay, so again, the first thing that I'm going to do is assign some oxidation numbers. So the first tin atom that we have is a plus two. The chloride ion is a minus one. In my second compound, the lead is a plus four, and the chloride is also a minus one. On my product side, the tin atom is now a plus four, chloride is still minus one, and the lead now is a plus two, and the chloride is a minus one. So in this instance, we have our tin that is undergoing the oxidation, going from plus two to plus four, becoming more positive. So it needs to lose two electrons per atom in order to make this transition take place. That will give us a total of positive two. On the reduction portion, we have the lead going from plus four down to plus two. So this is going to be adding two electrons per atom. So just like with normal balancing for some equations, we will have reactions that from time to time will not require any additional work in this case. We have plus two and minus two already there, so therefore this reaction is done. The last example that I'm going to give you guys for a tie line method example is a little bit more complicated than what we have in our first example. So the first thing, when we look at this, assigning our oxidation numbers across the top, the copper would have a plus two, sulfur minus two, hydrogen plus one, the nitrogen plus five, the oxygen minus two, the copper plus two, sulfur is zero, 
the nitrogen is now a plus 2, oxygen minus 2, hydrogen plus 1, and oxygen minus 2. So you can see here that the sulfur is going to be the substance that is undergoing the oxidation. And for every sulfur atom, it is going to lose two electrons. That is going to bring us to a total of plus two. Now, when we look at the nitrogen, it's going from a plus five to a plus two. So in this instance, for our reduction, the nitrogen is going to be gaining three electrons per atom which will give us a total of negative three. So now in this instance, because we have three and two, we need to make them the same. So the smallest number that both can be multiplied into will be six. So that will tell me that I need to multiply the top reaction by two to give me a total of minus six and the bottom reaction by three to get me to a positive six. So that tells me on each side of the equation, I need to have a total of two atoms of nitrogen and then three atoms of sulfur. So I can add those coefficients in automatically to start off with. And I can place the two here and the two here. So now you'll notice that we still have other elements that we need to balance based on the rest of the reaction. And in these types of situations, it is perfectly acceptable once you have balanced the redox portion with the electrons, you can balance the others out just using your normal atoms. So in this case, if you notice, I have three atoms of copper on the reactant side, so I need to have three on the product side. When I look at the oxygen atoms, I have a total of six on the reactant side. I have two here on the product side from the nitrogen monoxide and I have water, so I'm going to add a coefficient of 4 to the waters. And then finally, for my hydrogens, I have 8 total hydrogens now with the water being balanced. On the product side, I only have one hydrogen on the reactant side. So I'm going to put an 8 in front of the H+, and I now have my balanced equation. 3 coppers, 3 coppers, 3 sulfur, 3 sulfur two nitrogen, two nitrogen, six total oxygen, six total oxygen, and eight hydrogen. So that is correctly balanced. So we are now going to start looking at balancing redox reactions using a half reaction method, and this will work in either acidic or neutral solutions, and it will follow the same steps. The method that we're going to use for this is starting off the same type of way. The first thing you need to do is identify the oxidation numbers for all of your reactants and products so you can identify what is oxidizing and what is reducing. Once you have set these up into separate half reactions, you can then start by balancing all the other elements besides oxygen and hydrogen. Once you have balanced all of the other elements, you can balance the oxygen atoms by adding the correct number of waters to account for the difference in oxygens. It may be as simple as if you have only one set of oxygens on one side and none on the other, just adding that number onto the oxygen deficient side. But you may have compounds containing oxygen on each side of the equation and just make it so that the total number of oxygens is the same for each side. Once you have balanced out the number of oxygens using water molecules, you will then balance the hydrogen atoms by adding the number of H plus ions that will be equal to the total number of hydrogens in the waters. You'll then add up the charges on each side. Make sure they're equal by adding enough electrons to the more positive side. Typically, you're going to have the hydrogens and the electrons added to the same side of the equation. But just remember, you can also use the oxidation numbers across the top of your reaction to also determine how many electrons are transferred per atom. Once you have balanced each half reaction, then you can recombine the two half reactions together to give you the overall balanced equation. Please remember, number of electrons lost must equal number of electrons gained, so you have to balance the correct number of electrons for each side 
of the oxidation and reduction half reactions. So we're now going to start practicing a few of these and we're going to start with some neutral solutions. We're going to begin to practice balancing using the half reaction method starting off first with a neutral solution. Please remember for a neutral solution if at all possible you want to get it into its net ionic form. Since both FeCl3 and FeCl2 are ionic compounds we're able to transport those into a net ionic form. H2S, remember, is a weak acid, or in this case, it could be a gas that's being bubbled into the solution. In either case, it would not be ionized during this process. And then the HCl, that will be a spectator ion since the H plus and the Cl minus will not change their forms. So we can eliminate that from our half reactions. So the first thing we want to do is identify what will be oxidized and what will be reduced by showing the numbers on the top of our reactants and products. So the very first iron atom will have a plus three charge. The chlorine will be a minus one, the hydrogen plus one, sulfur minus two, the iron and the product will be a plus two, the chlorine will be a minus one, hydrogen plus one, chlorine minus one, and sulfur would be a zero. So hopefully you can tell with this reaction that the iron will be the substance that will be reduced and the sulfur will be the substance that is being oxidized. So as we begin to look at this reaction, I'll start with my oxidation first. I would have the H2S going to just the elemental sulfur. And now notice we don't have any oxygens to balance out, but we do have some hydrogens. So just like we did before, we are producing H plus, so we will have H plus ions in solution. So we can simply add two H pluses to balance out the number of hydrogens from the H2S on the reactant side. And now for my charges uh, to be balanced, I need to add two electrons. A little quick charge check that you can do is to make sure that the total charge of your reactants is equal to the total charge of your products. Remember, all, element, uh, all compounds and elements are going to be a zero. And so since I have a plus two here and I have a minus two here, that all adds up to equal zero. So I have zero for the reactant side, zero for the product side. So that half reaction is balanced correctly. So now we can move on to the reduction side. And for the reduction, we have Fe as a three plus ion going to Fe as a two plus ion. Once again, there is no oxygen present. There is no hydrogen. Our atoms are already balanced. So now we just need to balance the number of electrons. And so now because I have the more positive side being the reactant side, I'm gonna add one electron there that'll now give me a total of minus two or sorry plus two excuse me on both the reactants and the product side so that is also balanced from that standpoint so now i have two electrons that are being lost by the sulfur i have only one that is being gained by the iron atoms so i need to multiply my reduction reaction by two to make my electrons cancel off. So that would give me two atoms of iron plus two electrons and then two Fe2 plus ions as well. Now at this point we can then add our two half reactions together and so that would give me H2S plus two Fe3 plus. My two electrons like terms cancel off and now I go to my product side where I have two Fe2 plus plus two H plus plus a sulfur atom as my balanced net ionic equation. Now you are welcome to go back and add in your spectator ions to give you the complete balanced equation. And if we do that, we would have the H2S, we would have two FeCl3 
plus, oh no, sorry. And that will be forming, excuse me, the 2FeCl2, two, two HCLs, plus the sulfur. And now we're completely balanced with all our atoms. Two hydrogen, six total chlorines, two times two, four plus two for a total of six chlorines on the product side. Two, uh, or one sulfur, one sulfur, and then two iron atoms. So we are completely balanced. Okay, so let's look at one more example. And for this one, I want to focus on the way how the hydrogens are working for our reaction. Now, one of the unique characteristics that you will see for a redox reaction being done in a neutral solution, typically, unless there's an acid being produced, you'll find that the number of hydrogens that are created on each half reaction will cancel each other out for the overall reaction. So the first thing we want to do for this particular reaction is we want to go ahead and assign our oxidation numbers again. Please remember with your polyatomic ions, the sum of the oxidation numbers must equal the charge. So I have three atoms of oxygen, each with a minus two charge. So that gives me a total of minus six. For, so for the ion to have a minus two charge overall, the sulfur must be plus four. The beryllium in this case would be a zero charge. And then I come over to the thiosulfate ion, S2O3, 2 minus. I still have three atoms of oxygen, each being that minus 2. So that gives me a total of minus 6. So the two sulfur atoms together must be a plus 4 now. And so each one will be a plus 2. And then when I come over here for the Be2O3, 2 minus ion, I have the three atoms of oxygen giving me a total of minus 6. So I have the minus two overall, so the beryllium's need to add up to be plus four. So each one is a plus two for the charge. So now looking at this reaction, we know that for our oxidation, the beryllium is going to be oxidized and the sulfite ion will end up being reduced. So as a beginning piece, we're going to get our beryllium reaction set up. I'm going to give plenty of space so we can write extra things in. That's always one of the key things. You want to try to be spaced out so you can have room to write in and be organized. So as our first step, you'll notice here that I have two atoms of beryllium on the product side versus just one on the reactant. So the first step after you've assigned oxidation numbers is to balance all your non-oxygen or hydrogen atoms. So I'm going to start by placing a 2 for the beryllium. And now I have three oxygen atoms over on the product side, and I have none on the reactant side. So I'm going to start by adding three water molecules. That will now balance my oxygens, but now I have to balance my hydrogens as well. So if you notice here, I have a total of six hydrogen atoms. So I'm going to add six H plus on this side. Oops, I forgot to add the two minus charge there. Okay, so as far as my electrons are concerned, as I mentioned, you can do it one of two ways. If you notice here, I've got an element and a compound, so that charge will be zero. Over here, I have an ion with a minus two, and I have that with a plus six for a total of plus four. So in this situation, I need the plus four to come down to the zero, so I can add four electrons to the product side to make that happen. The other way that you can do it is just to simply look up here at the top and you notice I'm going from zero to a plus two. I have two atoms total, so two times plus two would be a total of four plus, so zero to four plus, it's losing four electrons. So either method you can use to figure out what you need to do. So here I'd be adding a negative four, which would bring my total for the product side to a zero. Now, when we look at our reduction, we are gonna take the sulfite ion and we're gonna convert it into the thiosulfate ion. So same type of situation. I have one atom of sulfur going to two. So my first step will be to balance the sulfide ions by placing a two out in front. 
I originally had the same number of oxygen atoms, but now in this case, because I have the coefficient of 2, I now have to multiply the oxygens by 2 as well, which gives me a total of 6. I only have 3 on the product side, so I'm going to start by adding 3 waters to the product side. That now gives me 6 hydrogens, so I'm also going to add 6 H pluses. And now for our charge, I have a total of minus 2 plus 0 on the product side, and I have 2 times minus 2 plus 6 for a total of plus 2 on the reactant side. So this being plus 2, this side being minus 2, I need to add 4 electrons to the more positive side to bring that back down to minus 2 for the charge on each half of that reaction. So I now have my half reactions balanced. So I can then take my two half reactions and I can cancel any like terms found on either side. So if you notice for my oxidation reaction, I have three H2Os and I have three H2Os. Those two will cancel off. I also have these six H pluses and the 6H pluses. And then lastly, I have the four electrons that will also cancel. So now that I've canceled off all of our like terms, I can simply add the two half reactions together for my final balance. So I would have 2Be plus 2SO3 2 minus. Forming Be two O three two minus plus S two O three two minus. Now again, little charge check really quickly. I have zero plus two times minus two, and that equals minus two plus minus two. So I have minus four and minus four. So once again, charge is balanced, so I know that I've balanced the reaction correctly. Okay, we're now going to look at an example where we have an acidic solution being used. Now, for an acidic solution, the rules are exactly the same as the neutral solutions. The only thing that will be different is because of the fact that we have an acidic medium, we will have a lot of H plus ions that are found in solution at the end. So in this case, you won't have the H pluses canceling off. Now, first step, let's start by figuring out the oxidation numbers. So the very first thing, we'll have a plus seven for the manganese because each oxygen is minus two. I have four of them for a total of minus eight, and I need the ion to be a minus one charge overall. So it will be plus 7 minus 2. The bromide ion will be minus 1. On the product side, I have the manganese ion that will be plus 2. And then the bromine will be a 0. So now my oxidizing agent in this case will be the permanganate ion. Whenever they're asking you for that, you would do the entire compound, not just the element. So I'd have the permanganate ion as the uh, oxidizing agent, and then the reducing agent in this case would be the bromide ion. So if we start off with our oxidation, we will have the Br minus going to the Br2. First step is identical. Balance the number of non-oxygen or hydrogen atoms. I have two bromines on the product side. I have one bromide ion for the reactants. So I'm going to start by placing a two for the bromide ion. Now, as a result, for each atom, it's going from minus one to zero. So it's adding one electron or to the product side, or removing one electron from the bromide ion. But since I have two atoms, I need to now have that as minus two electrons. That now balances the oxidation half reaction. So now let's look at the reduction. 
This is one of the characteristic reactions. As I mentioned in class, you will see this over and over and over again. So if you go and memorize this reaction, please feel free because it will save you time. So I'm going to take the MnO4 minus. I'm going to give me a lot of space on here. It's going to Mn2 plus. I have four oxygen atoms, so I'm going to add four waters to my product side, which will mean I'm going to add eight hydrogens. And then finally, for my number of electrons, I'm going from a plus seven to a plus two. Therefore, I'm going to be gaining five electrons per atom. I only have one atom for each one, so I have five electrons total. Now, I have two versus five, so to make them cancel, I need to put coefficients onto both. I'm going to multiply my top reaction by five. I'm going to multiply my bottom reaction by two. You'll notice the only thing that we need to cancel is the electrons because there's no oxygens in our first reaction for this free, uh, halide becoming a free halogen. So when I do this, I would change my two to 10 bromide ions and I would have five bromine molecules and I would have 10 electrons. For my bottom reaction, I would have two permanganate ions. I would now have 16 hydrogen ions, 10 electrons two manganese two plus ions and eight h2o's the only thing to cancel would be my electrons so i can now add everything else together so i'd have 10 br minus plus 2 mno4 minus plus 16 h plus and that will form the 5 br2 plus the two Mn2 plus and eight H2Os. So let's do a quick charge check and just make sure that we balance it correctly. So I have a total of minus 10, 10 times the minus one, plus two times the minus one for a total of minus 12. And then I'm gonna add a total of 16 for the hydrogens. So that will give me a positive total of plus four. And then if I look on the product side, I have five times zero plus two times a minus uh, plus two. And finally adding that to zero. So I also have a total of plus four. So this is also correctly balanced. Okay, so we're gonna do one more example for an acidic solution. So again, the first thing we're going to do is identify what our oxidation numbers are. So the sulfur has a zero, hydrogen plus one, the nitrogen from the nitrate ion will be a plus five, and the oxygen will be a minus two. On the product side, sulfur now will become a plus four, the oxygen will stay a minus two, the nitrogen gas plus two, oxygen will be minus two, the hydrogen from the water plus one and the oxygen minus two. So our substance that is undergoing oxidation, that will be the sulfur and the substance that will be undergoing the reduction will be the nitric acid. So once again, in this process, it is easiest to put them into net ionic form. So for my oxidation, I'm going to take the sulfur and it's going to form the SO2. So I have two oxygens on my product side, none on the reactants. So I'm going to add two units of water. That will now give me four hydrogens on the product side. And now for my charges, I'm going from zero to plus four. So that would be four electrons. Or again, I have a total of zero charge on the reactants. I initially had plus four, so I added four electrons to make that zero. So now I have my oxidation half reaction balanced. So let's now look at the reduction side. So again, because the H plus is staying the same on each side, I'm gonna treat it, since this is a strong acid, as a spectator, and just simply take it as the NO3 minus ion, and it is going to go to the NO gas that is being produced. So I have two less oxygens. Notice I have three on the reactant side. I have only one on the product. 
So I'm going to start by adding two waters onto the product side. And now from there, that will add four H pluses for my reactants. And now from here, I can add my number of electrons. So again, I'm going from a plus five to a plus two. So I'm going to add three electrons. That gives me a total of zero on the reactant side, zero on the product side. So I am ready to cancel out and get our electrons to cancel and add the two half reactions together. In this case, since I have three electrons for my reduction, four electrons for my oxidation, I'm going to multiply the oxidation half reaction by three. I'm going to multiply the reduction half reaction by four. So I'd have three, six, three, 12, and 12 for my reactants, or my oxidation, excuse me. For my reduction, I would have four NO3 minuses. I will now have 16 H pluses. I'll have 12 for my electrons, four for the NOs, and eight for the waters. So when I add my two half reactions together, first thing, the electrons, they will obviously cancel. Now we can start to reduce because of like terms. If you notice, I have six waters on the reactant side for the oxidation. I have eight for the products. So I'm going to subtract off eight minus six, and that will give me two H2Os total. I also have 16 H pluses versus 12. So I'm going to cancel the 12 and reduce the 16 down to four. So I now have all of my like terms canceled so I can add everything else back into this reaction. So I have the four NO3s. I have the three sulfurs for my reactant side. On my product side, I have the three SO2s and the four NOs along with the two waters. And I should now be balanced. We can do a quick little charge check. I have four times minus one for a total of minus four. Adding that to the four hydrogen ions, so that's plus four. So that gives me a total of zero. On the product side, I have zero plus zero plus zero. So we have everything balanced out from a charge standpoint. If you want to look at it in terms of atoms, I have three sulfurs, three sulfurs, four nitrogen, four nitrogen. I have a total of four hydrogens, four hydrogens. And now for my oxygens, I have 12 total oxygens on the reactant side. Three times two is six, plus four is 10, plus two is 12. So it balances both by the charge and by the number of atoms. Okay, so the next example that we're going to do is looking at reactions taking place in basic solutions. So the only thing that is different between the acidic or neutral solutions and the basic solutions is that we will not have extra H plus found in solution, we'll have extra OH minus. So we're going to follow the same set of steps. We're going to start by assigning our oxidation numbers. So here I have minus two for the oxygen. I have a total of three, so that's minus six. I have a three minus charge. So the arsenic in this case must be plus three. The bromine is zero. Now for the arsenate ion, since I have four atoms of oxygen, each being minus two, that's a minus eight total for the oxygens, minus three for the ion. So arsenic is going to plus five, and then bromine is going to minus one. So we now know that the arsenic is going to be the substance that will get oxidized. So I have my arsenite ion as my reducing agent. And that is going to the arsenate ion. You'll notice I have one less oxygen on the product side than I do for the reactants. So I'm going to add one molecule of H2O. And this means that I have to add two hydrogens on the product side. Now, as I was saying, the one thing that's different between the basic solutions and 
the acidic or neutral is that we have no extra H plus, we have OH minus. So when we do this, the only thing that changes is we have to add the same number of OH minuses to each side of the equation to cancel off the H plus ions. So I have two H plus, two OH minus, so together that would form two waters. And then from my electrons, one, ar one atom of arsenic on each side, plus three to plus five, so I know I'm gonna have two electrons added. You don't always have to do it for each individual half reaction step. I went ahead and did it in this first example because the bromines in the reduction will not have any hydroxides involved since there are no oxygen. So I'm going to go ahead and do it in this first step. But if you had oxygen in the second step that you needed to add in, you could wait and just add all the H pluses together. And then after the final reactions have been added together, you could then add the OH minuses to each side. But either way, you won't go wrong. So for my reduction, I'm going to start off with the Br2. Notice again that I have two of them. So I'm going to put the coefficient 2 out in front, which now means that I'm going to have to add two electrons instead of just one. So at this point, I have the same number of electrons, so they will both cancel off. And I can now add my reactions together. You will notice, though, that I have two waters on the product side. I have one water on the reactant side, so I can get rid of one of those two waters and cancel that off. So for my overall reaction, I'd have ASO3, 3 minus, plus the Br2, plus two hydroxides, forming the arsenate ion, ASO4, 3 minus, plus two bromide ions, and we canceled off one of the two waters, so we're now left with one water. Do a quick charge check. I have three minus, I have zero, and I have minus two. I have minus three, minus two, and zero. So minus five on each side. So we are balanced from a charge standpoint. I have one atom of arsenic. I have two atoms of bromine. Two plus three for a total of five atoms of oxygen four atoms plus one, five atoms of oxygen, two hydrogen, two hydrogen. So we're balanced for that as well. Okay, one more example for the basic solution. Okay, so for our last basic example, we're going to look at the HPBO2 minus polyatomic ion and reacting that with RE. And that is going to produce the PB as a solid plus the REO4 minus ion. So when we begin this process, the H will get the oxidation number of a plus one. The oxygen would be a minus two. And because we have the overall charge of minus one for the compound, the lead will be a plus two as well. The rhenium will be a zero charge. So I would have the lead also on the product side with a zero. And now the uranium on the product side will be a plus seven due to the fact that we have four atoms of oxygen giving us minus eight total and the ion is minus one. So now looking at this, I know my oxidation is going to be the uranium going from the zero charge to the plus seven. So I will start off with that. We now have four oxygens difference between the two sides. So I'm gonna add four waters and I'm gonna add eight H pluses to balance out the hydrogens from the water. Now in this instance, because I have oxygen in my other half reaction as well, I'm just gonna go ahead and wait and I'll show you what I was talking about by balancing the hydrogens at the very end instead of for each step. So now for my, oh, we forgot the electrons, excuse me. So we have going from zero to plus seven. So we need to add seven electrons since we have one atom. So now that will give me a total zero and zero on each side. So that one is now correct for its half reaction. For the bottom reaction, we have the H, P, 
PbO2 minus ion, and it is going to Pb as a solid. So you'll notice in this case, I have two more oxygen atoms than I do on the product side. So I'm going to add two waters. But now in this case, I have four hydrogens total on the, pro on the product side, but I already have one found on the reactant side. So I'm only going to add in this case three, oh, I'm sorry, three H pluses, excuse me. Three H pluses. And so now in terms of our electrons, we went from a plus two down to a zero. So we're gonna add two electrons. So we now have two oxygens, two oxygens, one lead, one lead, four hydrogen, four total hydrogen. So we're now balanced from our charge standpoint. Now, for these two half reactions, I need to multiply the reduction reaction by seven and the oxidation by two to make them balance with electrons. So I will now have two for the REs. I'm gonna have eight waters two for the REO4 minus ion, 16, <coughs> excuse me, and 14 electrons. For my reduction half reaction, I'm gonna have seven of the HPbO2 minus. I will now have 21 H pluses, and I will have 14 electrons. Over on the product side, seven PBs and 14 H2Os. So now I'm gonna combine like terms so the 14 electrons will cancel. I have 16 H pluses versus 21. So I'm gonna reduce that down to five H pluses on the reactant side. And then for waters, I have 14 versus eight. So I'm gonna get rid of the eight waters on the reactants and change that to six H2Os for the product side. I can now add everything else together. So I'm going to have the two Re's plus the seven HPbO2 minuses. And then on the product side, I'll have the two REO4 minus plus seven PBs plus the six waters. Now, at the very end, because this is a basic solution, I need to add five OH minuses to each side of the reaction. So these two will cancel to produce five waters. I have six waters on the other side, so I can cancel all five of those off with the six and I'm left with one water. So that will now give me an overall reaction of two Re plus seven HPbO2 minus forming two REO4 minus plus seven Pb plus H2O plus five OH minus. So let's do a quick charge check just to make sure that we have everything needed. So on my reactant side, I have zero plus a minus seven for a total of minus seven. On my product side, I have two times a minus one for a total of minus two. I have zero for the lead, zero for the water, and I have minus five for the OH minuses which also gives me a minus seven. Let's just do a quick check from atoms for that standpoint. I have two Re's, two Re's, seven H's. I have two for the water plus five for the hydroxide for a total of seven. I have seven leads, seven leads, 14 oxygens. I have eight for the two REO four minus, one more for the water for nine and five for the hydroxide for a total of 14. So we have correctly balanced this equation. Okay, so the last example that we're gonna look at is a special type of redox reaction that occurs, which is called a disproportionation reaction. This is one in which the same substance undergoes both oxidation and reduction at the same time. 
So you will see two different compounds that will form with the same element as a product. Or I guess it could be as a reactant too for the two combining together now that I think about it. So for this reaction, we're going to look at an example here with chlorine going to the chlorate ion and the chloride ion. Now the one special trick that I will mention to you guys with this is that when you do the final balancing, a lot of times with these disproportionation reactions, you're going to have to reduce your coefficients at the end because it'll all be divisible by two more than likely. So let's start by looking at this reaction. So in our first chlorine, we're going to have a zero charge. For the chloride or chlorate ion, excuse me, we would have a plus five and the oxygen would be a minus two. And then finally for the chloride ion, we would have minus one. So the easy thing to understand is that chlorine will be both your oxidizing and your reducing agents. So when we look at the oxidation portion of this, it will be the chlorine forming the chlorate ion. So in this case, very first step, again, balancing the number of atoms. So I have two chlorines on the reactant side. I have only one on the product. So I'm going to start by placing a two in front. That will now give me a total of six oxygens. So I need to add six waters. And I will need to balance my hydrogens. So I'd add 12 H pluses for this one. Now, I will mention this one is done specifically in an acidic solution. That would need to be told to you at the end. Uh, but we can now look at the number of electrons because I have two atoms, both going from zero to plus five. I know that it will have to release a total of 10 electrons. So now for my reduction, I'm going from Cl2 and it is forming Cl minus. Once again, two atoms versus one. So I'm gonna start by placing a two and then I need to add two electrons to the reactant side for my reduction. So I now have each half reaction balanced, but I have 10 electrons in the first versus five in the second. So I'm gonna multiply my second reaction by five. That will give me five chlorines. That will give me 10 electrons and 10 chloride ions. So I'm now ready to add my two half reactions together. My 10 electrons will cancel off. So now in this case, notice I have Cl2 in both of my half reactions. So that will give me one plus five for a total of six Cl2s. I have the six H2Os. And now on the product side, I have two ClO3 minus. I have 10 Cl minus, 12 H pluses. And I'm already rid of the electrons, so let me erase that. So now you'll notice when I have my equation balanced, I have 12 total chlorines, two plus 10 for a total of 12, six oxygens here on the product side, six times one for the water, and 12 hydrogens on each side. However, like I said, notice with my coefficients, 6, 6, 2, 10, and 12, they are all divisible by 2. So I need to reduce my half reactions down, or my total reaction down, to give me a final balanced chemical equation of 3 Cl2 plus 3 H2O, forming ClO3 minus plus five Cl minus plus six H plus. From a quick charge check standpoint, I have three times zero plus three times zero for a total of zero. I have minus one plus a minus five plus six for a total of zero. So our charges balance out as well as our atoms. So this concludes our session on redox reactions. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please come in tomorrow with questions if you have any. Thank you. Good night.